Slug FPV. It's been a while since I've done a freestyle abbreviated build and so this one actually is going to be the smallest one I've ever done. Um, the frame that I'm going to be using is the Armitan 1.6 inch frame kit. Um, I don't know I'm going to hack this name up. The uh, name of the frame is the Odonta. So um, it's basically a micro freestyle frame. And then as far as the flight controller, this is the Happy Model Super B F4 Lite all-in-one whoop board that supports ELRS. It's the same one that you get with the Mobula 6 HD0 digital FPV um, whoop, 65 millimeter. As far as the motors, I decided to go with the RNC Power GTS V3 uh, 1002 19,000 KV. Um, I decided on the 19, It's a, I think it's a good compromise between um, efficiency and still being able to do some freestyle with it. And it does have a 1.5 millimeter motor post. Um, the battery uh, I picked is the Beta FPV 450 milliamp hour battery. I'm going to be going with a BT 2.0 connector so I don't get so much voltage sag. Um, as far as uh, standoffs, I'm going to go ahead and substitute these uh, M2 knurled 25mm uh, standoffs um, because I'm going to need a little more height. And as far as the um, VTX antenna, I really like these micro VORT um, antennas. They're really lightweight and actually get a pretty good signal um, transmission with these. And then uh, moving on to the props, I'm going to be going with bi-blade bi props. Um, these are the GenFan 40 millimeter props and uh, they're efficient, but still um, are fine for doing, you know, lightweight freestyle. And then the star of the show really is this HD0 um, VTX um, digital FPV board that runs off of 1S. It's the same one that goes in the Mobula 6 HD0. With that, let's go ahead and get started with the build. BT 2.0 pigtail soldered up, the white wires ground, and the blue wire is VBAT positive. I know it adds weight, but I'm gonna go ahead and add a buzzer to this build. It's only about a gram, so um, I think it's very much worth it. Uh, these little quads are just really hard to find. If you're flying out in a field and you uh, lose it, um, at least having a little tiny buzzer like this allows you to find it easier. Um, the D-Shot beacon just isn't loud enough on these little motors. All right, let's see if this works. So if you look here, Buzz Plus is on the left side here on this pad, and then the negative side, Buzz Minus, is on the opposite side. So to lose a little bit of weight, I'm gonna go ahead and I've already pried up these uh, metal covers. I'm assuming that they do act like a little bit of a heat sink. They're not a true heat sink where they're touching the components, but uh, assuming that uh, they're also used for protection. But I'm gonna go ahead um, and you can just pry them up, just be careful. They're uh, just kind of clipped in. And uh, so I'm gonna remove the bottom one now. So the frame is symmetrical as far as the um, arm links. And um, so what I'm gonna do is uh, cut the motor wires a little long and just uh, tuck them underneath like I have them bent here. I'm just gonna connect the, take the connector off and maybe trim a little bit of the wire off. But I like leaving my wires a little longer. That way, if you make a mistake, a stripping or soldering, you can go back and correct that. Um, if you cut them too short, then you're kind of out of luck other than adding a piece of wire, which um, actually isn't the best. Motor soldered up. Just as a building tip, I usually build and test in phases. For example, um, before I soldered on the HD0 VTX, um, I ensured that the motor spin up correctly. Um, the reason why you want to do that is it's a lot easier to pull things apart when you don't have everything soldered up and buttoned up. So plugged it in, made sure the motor spun correctly. And uh, then I soldered on the VTX. Um, 
it's pretty basic configuration if you look at it um, the transmit goes to the rx on the flight controller it's the purple wire there and then the rx here goes to the um, tx on the flight controller and then of course you, the red is vbat and the ground um, is going to the uh, vbat ground so um, on the other side just for completeness you can see here the again the purple wire is coming off of the um, TX on the um, HD0, but it's connected to the RX pad. Then the green wire is the TX, and then it again is attached or soldered to the HD0 um, RX pad. So it's RX to TX and TX to RX. Before I put the top plate on, I just wanted to go through the things I had to do to this build uh, to make it work with the HD0 1S VTX. Uh, the first being is uh, I had to go with a 16 millimeter bolt uh, for the stack um, so that I had enough room between the Happy Model flight controller and the HD0 VTX. So you can see that uh, the rubber uh, spacers that I used, the grommets. Um, I just used the ones that came with a Happy Model flight controller and then also um, the ones that came with the um, HD Zero uh, 1S uh, VTX board. In addition, I had to go with uh, standoffs that were 20 millimeter so that I had enough room between the stack and the top of the, the top plate. And then lastly, um, the mount, the camera mount that came with this doesn't work with the HD Zero micro camera. So I went ahead and designed a little 3D printed um, camera mount. I'll go ahead and put it on Thingiverse. But um, one of the things I don't like about this build is um, it is 14 millimeters um, on these... Um, standoffs center to center well the problem with that is um, that really doesn't allow enough room for a 14 millimeter camera to fit in in between the standoffs so that makes it kind of goofy so what i did is i went ahead and designed this so that i could um, basically get some angle for the um, camera so it's not perfect i mean i can't get up to like you know 40 degrees but you can get it looks like it's about maximum uh, 30 degrees which is plenty for a small micro but I normally even fly flatter than that about 25 to 15 degrees I'm not a very fast um, flyer when it comes to uh, micro acro so um, I would have had to extend it out even further which I didn't want to do but I do like the fact that it does stick out um, so that you don't have to worry about props in view. I mean, it's a personal preference. I normally don't like props in my view. Uh, I, so actually for me, this is a better solution. Uh, so I'll go ahead and uh, put the link to this uh, on Thingiverse. So if you want to print it out, you can. Uh, one thing uh, to note, the hole that I have is really just to, it's kind of like a pilot hole. Um, you'll have to auger it out a little bit and the reason being is these screws that hold the camera in on this camera mount that I um, designed um, they're pretty small so I didn't want to have to find a tiny tiny washer so <laughs> I just went ahead and made the hole um, pretty small so that the head of the screw wouldn't um, push through the the TPU um, on the camera mount this is what the finished product looks like with the top plate on. Uh, it does come with these rubber bands to hold the battery in place. Uh, it, it shows it being in the front and the back here, but I had some uh, battery pads here that I cut down and just stuck those on. It's just a little easier for me uh, to get the battery in and out with just one rubber band to hold the battery in place. And this is anti-slip, so it doesn't add hardly any weight. So I went ahead and included that. 
Uh, you don't have to do that, but uh, overall, I'm very pleased with this build. Without a battery, it's coming in at 37 grams. With a 451S battery, we're coming in at 48 grams. So next, I'm going to take it out for its maiden flight. So before I get into the pros and cons of this build, I wanted to go over uh, my tune that I used on this. So I started out with the tune that came with the flight controller, the Happy Model flight controller. And it was really for the um, HD Zero 1S Whoop. And it uh, just had too much prop wash. So then I went into the presets and found UAV Tech's Whoop um, generic tune from Mark Spatz, and that worked great. Um, minimal prop wash, so if you're gonna do this build with this particular flight controller, I would recommend um, the UAV Tech uh, Mark Spatz um, presets for the tune. Uh, one other thing to note is on the power and battery, um, the minimum cell voltage, they had it like at 2.9, and the warning at 3.0. I think that was really for a PH 2.0 connector. I'm running a BT 2.0 connector. And uh, so you wanna crank that up a little bit because you don't get as much voltage sag. So I set it to 3.2 uh, for the warning cell voltage. And I went ahead and had the buzzer start um, you know, beeping when it got down to 3.2. So I knew to come in. And uh, again, the battery voltage after I landed and it recovered a little bit was uh, 3.68 uh, uh, pretty consistently. So about 3.7 volts, which is great. Uh, I don't want to overstress the batteries. So that, as far as the, the setup, um, just another thing on the ports tab. Um, I used, a, like I said in the build, a UART 2. Uh, for the uh, VTX, the HD0 VTX, uh, there is a way to set up smart audio on UART1, but the pad is so small and it's right next to a uh, surface mount part. I just was too concerned about um, shorting something out and it's just a very super tiny pad. Um, I'll show you in the screenshot uh, above here, but um, if you want smart audio, um, you could use UART1 for that, just to mention um, if 
uh, that's something that you think that you absolutely have to have. Um, for me, being able to set the VTX uh, just with the normal HD0 uh, VTX menu is plenty good for me. But uh, that's it as far as uh, the, the tuning changes that I did on this thing. As far as flight times, I was getting about uh, three minutes just cruising around, a little over. Um, and that's with the BT 2.0 450 milliamp hour beta FPV battery 1S. Um, if you're really heavy into the throttle, like you're really pushing it hard, flying acro, uh, then it goes down to about a little over two and a half minutes, like two minutes, 35 seconds, um, without you know damaging the battery at all. Um, I would say that I was flying in pretty cold temperatures. It was about 32 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius. So um, again, you know, your flying style will determine how much flight time. So nothing like five minutes of flight time, but um, still pretty reasonable. So in conclusion, here are my final thoughts on this build. Uh, it's lightweight. It only weighs 37 grams when you consider you have HD video in a freestyle carbon fiber frame. Uh, that is super impressive. And it just, uh, again, like with the HD Zero Whoop Happy Model, it just really does blow my mind how tiny now you can have a build and get full HD video feed into your goggles. Another uh, pro of this thing, it's extremely quiet even more quiet than the 1S HT0 Whoop. Um, you just don't hear it at all. You get it uh, 20, 30 feet away and you can't even hardly hear it. It is just super quiet with these bi-blade props. Also, it is very fun to fly. It, this thing uh, for a 1S freestyle quad, it is just really fun. It does everything I need. Now, of course, it's not a five inch, doesn't have the mass to where you know you can throw it around uh, like you can a five inch five inch quad but you can still do uh, some pretty fun acro with it and it's just so tiny you can fly around things and not have to worry about it um, it crashes pretty well I mean I did uh, crash it on the pavement uh, a couple of times it did fine um, it, the frame held up now I'm sure that you know you take it out to uh, a bando or something and run it into a concrete wall you're probably going to break an arm but um, for park flying it's perfect uh, the only cons is really the build is more geared towards someone who has more experience building quads as the soldering is fine even though they did a good job with separating the pads for the escs you still have to have a pretty good um, experience uh, soldering something that small it's just a little more difficult than the soldering pads that you would have on a flight controller for a five inch quad. And then also, uh, because there's no really good camera mount solution for this, you're either gonna have to design your own, and then also you're gonna have to have access to a 3D printer. Now again, this is for a, you know, a modification because this thing really wasn't, again, designed, this, this frame kit for the HD Zero system. But, um, you know, I hopefully, you know, maybe they'll, I doubt if they'll see this video, but if somebody does uh, from Armitan, you know, maybe they, they'll uh, come out with an HD version of this and uh, take uh, that into account. So overall, I give this build two thumbs up um, just on the fun factor for flying a 1S Nano with HD video feed. And as always, thanks for watching my channel.